Well, time to bust out the strange. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. of Iggy taunting back, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. What it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4 Our Harvest Awaits Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Luca was alone. The house was empty. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. 
Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice, but I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go! Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you have to run! The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Rollo's voice was coming through more clearly now, but some words were still just static. The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response, his pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Willow's voice began to fade. With that, the signal died for good. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. The three shared a determined look. to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring, a sort of natural barrier for the impatient. shared a mischievous grin. to hear as a muffled voice began. Fear gripped Luca's throat. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. Ha, 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 ha. 
to his knees. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Fight. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Kerr turned his
his back on the two boys. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here? Let's put a pin in this for now.